All right, now we're going to work on factoring trinomials that have a number in front of the x squared term. So we've already worked on uh, trinomials that didn't have a number here. It was just a 1. But now we're going to make things a little bit bigger here. Okay, now in these two sections, these are actually two different sections in the textbook where they talk about how to factor these trinomials by the trial and error method and then they talk about how to um, factor these in the grouping method or using the grouping method. I think that by far the easiest way to deal with trinomials um, that have a lead coefficient, something here in front of the x squared term that is something other than 1 is to do what we call the product sum method and that is what they're calling grouping. But just to show you, let's go ahead and let's try and do this both ways. We're going to look at this same problem both ways. Okay, here we have a 2x squared plus 13x plus 15 and they're telling us to factor this by trial and error which is their first first method. Alright, if you'll remember from the factoring we've done before, your first rule is always to factor out the GCF. There is not a GCF here, so now we have to look and see how many terms do we have. In this case we have three terms which means that we're going to usually factor by trial and error. Now because this is something other than a 1, there is a better way, but let's go ahead and try the trial and error method. So with trial and error, we um, just throw down our parentheses and start in. Now here's where the problem comes, because we have something other than just x squared. You know, before we would just say x and x, but since we have that 2 in there, we're going to have to do something different. In this case, we're going to have to make one of them a 2x and the other one an x because that's the only way we can multiply things together and get 2x squared. Now, if you'll remember from before, this sign tells us whether they're the same or different, so we know that these signs are both the same, and we also know that they're both positive, so we can go ahead and put that in. Then we looked at that last term, that 15, and we tried to see, well, let's see, factors of 15 would be things like 1 times 15 or uh, 3 times 5. Now, if you'll notice, none of these combinations will give us a 13 that we need in the middle. Now, there's a reason for that, because if you'll remember, to get the middle term, we have to multiply the inside and the outside terms. We have complicated that because this is now a 2. So let's just throw something in there and see if it works. Let's say if we tried the 1 and the 15. Here's the trial and error part of the trial and error method. So we know that 2x times x will give us 2x squared. We also know that 1 times 15 will give us 15. It's really just that middle term that we have to work out. So 1 times x would give us x and 2x times 15 would give us 30x. Now if we add these together that becomes 31x so we know that that's not correct. So let me erase this off and instead of the 1 and 15 what if I tried the 15 and the 1? Well that would give us 15x and 2x but when you add those you get 17x so that's still not the middle term. So that tells us that 1 and 15 did not work. Well, what if we tried the 3 and the 5? So now we have 3x, and then we have 10x, which when we add those together, we do get 13x. Therefore, this is how that factors. Now that's using the trial and error method. It becomes a little bit more trial and error and retry and um, all of that business. So in the next video I'm going to show you how to do it using the product sum method. Some call it the AC method. This book calls it the grouping method.